So, despite my attempts at professionalism and keeping any sorts of promises I've made to people, I have been playing Hi-Fi Rush pretty much non-stop the past few weeks. I thought I wouldn't make a video on it, because this game's plot is a Saturday morning cartoon, it's as straightforward as it gets and not something I usually talk about on this channel, but I have not felt this much raw joy from a video game since Devil May Cry 5 came out, and I think this sort of love has to be celebrated, not just swept under the rug. So, really, this is not a last minute essay, it's a last minute shameless advertisement that I'm not even paid for. Developed by Tango Games and released for PC and whatever the hell is the current version of Xbox in January 2023, Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm action game mixing the feeling of flow coming from staying on beat with music and the flow of styling on enemies in something like DMC or Bayonetta. An idea so genius and seemingly obvious that it's a wonder that nobody did it before. I mean, come on. We all imagined a ninja running on power lines to the rhythm of whatever is playing on an iPod when stuck on a bus. Let's not pretend otherwise here. We got games matching actions to the beat like Necrodancer or Bullets Per Minute, but Hi-Fi Rush takes it a step further. Everything is moving to the beat. Your actions, enemy attacks, the HUD, the environment, the robot cat named after the Roland TR-808 drum machine, the actions in the cutscenes, everything. I'll be the first one to admit that I ain't got rhythm and I only get good at games like Elite Beat Agents on higher difficulties because at that point it's nothing but fast reflexes. Hi-Fi Rush rates your fights on three scales. Stylishness, staying on beat, and time taken, and I notoriously got SCS ranks respectively. But even a riffless rube like me got to enjoy this game a whole lot because you're not penalized if you miss the beat, you're rewarded if you keep it. The attacks land on beat no matter when you press the button, they just get more or less wind up, but chain them correctly, and not only do you get the crowd cheering with each hit, but also a damage bonus or the ability to chain three dodges in a row instead of just one. Genius. The story follows Chai, a 25 years old rockstar? Future rockstar. A college dropout with delusions of grandeur, who joins a body augmentation program of a corporation called Vandalay due to some visible, but never discussed, disability. But rather than just get a robot arm for collecting garbage like the corporate overlords mandated, he gets his music player hydraulic pressed into his chest, explaining the game mechanics. And the beat goes on. Chai is a fucking idiot, and I love him. Not only can I sympathize with being in over your head and still genuinely thinking in terms of I wanna be someone big when I grow up, well into adulthood, but he's just really funny to see fumble his way through everything. There has been a lot of backlash against quirky dialogue in recent years due to oversaturation. But in comedy, just as in music, timing is everything, and I think Hi-Fi Rush nails it more often than it does not. Humor is always subjective, but in general, I prefer watching larger-than-life figures being ridiculous and throwing gags at me every 5 seconds, instead of relatable humor of people staying on one punchline for 10 minutes and insisting that means they told 10 jokes. Chai may be mayor of Damba City, but pretty much every character in the game is ridiculous in some way, especially the bosses. The game is also quite open with metatextually poking fun at itself, pointing out cut content ideas, having a full chapter dedicated to attacking a creative type by making him overindulge and draining his budget. Outright having both Chai and the corporation act based on rule of cool rather than any pragmatic approach. It's just an all-out barrage of comedy start to finish, while staying consistent with its character's traits and motivations, earning itself some sappier moments towards the end and making them feel genuine. This game would probably live rent-free in my head for all my life, if it came out when I was like, say, 12. But at 29, I still think it's incredibly well crafted on all levels. Something that will remain timeless and fresh well into the future, until the music deals expire and the game suddenly disappears from all digital platforms because life is hell! Speaking of music, the majority of the game's soundtrack is original and it bangs, using layered instrumentation and shifting as you go through a level, adding new instruments and vocals. There are a few licensed tracks, primarily for boss fights and other special occasions, but you can also turn on streamer mode to get them replaced with fully original tracks composed to the tempo and to convey the same vibes. Having played the game in full with both modes, I can safely say no matter how you go, you're gonna have a great time. Sometimes the original songs feel better fitting than the licensed tracks, but then you have an all-out brawl set to the prodigious Invaders Must Die and there's really no replacing that. Before I get into all-out gushing, I just want to point out two core issues I have with the game. 
I played it on keyboard and mouse, and while I had no trouble with the button layout or anything like that, the left and right mouse buttons are color-coded with the same dull orange and it can blend together in a timed prompt. Like, come on, make one green or something. Why do consoles get all the colors? Second thing is, once you unlock level select and can go back to previous levels, the events always play out the same. You always get tutorial prompts, the cutscenes always play, the dialogue always triggers. Most of it is skippable, but when the dialogue is tied to characters moving in engine on screen, the dialogue has to play out in its entirety. And I can see that becoming a bit tiring once I set my sights on beating all the difficulties and getting S ranks everywhere. The pressure of dancing at my own wedding didn't teach me rhythm, but by heavens video games will. So with those negatives out of the way, I am gonna just indulge for a few minutes while avoiding spoilers. I adore Chai's visual design and how they made him always act to the beat. His footsteps always match it regardless of walking speed, his idle animation has him tapping his foot and snapping his fingers, and his scarf conducts an invisible orchestra to boot. And this extends to everything else, this is a timelessly pretty game because of the way they went with bright, colorful cartoon aesthetics. The 3D character animation and transitions to some select 2D cutscenes is immaculate as well, this game oozes style in every aspect. The combos are quick, snappy and easy to learn. Timing everything to the beat made it incredibly easy to parse and internalize stuff that newcomers to character action games may struggle with. This combo says pause, how long do you wait between one press and another? One beat, no more and no less. As your vocabulary expands, it never gets too intimidating and it's easy to keep all options at the back of your mind, even if they are context sensitive like parry counterattacks or comboing into an ally assist. If Japanese action games intimidate you with how intricate and in depth they can get, I think this is a perfect jumping in point. And if you are already a Tricks or Ticks or Grand Royal Guard Master, come on, it's set to the music, you have to try this out. I enjoyed the plot quite a bit, it never really sucked for me, keeping up an enjoyable tempo of introducing me to more and more weirdos that need to get their face bashed in with a guitar. It's nothing deep and I did turn my eyes a bit at the corporate apologia of the management just being a few bad apples who took over a benevolent company, but I laughed my ass off several times and enjoyed just watching the colorful band of misfits banter with each other. From the heroic side, Cinnamon is a standout, being a robot drawing expressions on his face with a sharpie. Such a simple idea, but I just couldn't get enough of seeing it. I also really enjoyed how expressive 808, the RoboCat, is and how Chai plays with her in the short cutscenes in between combat phases. It's a small thing, but just so important for that energy of lovable scamps. Almost every woman in this game could break my spine and I would be thankful for it. Especially you, Corsica. Yes, thank you. Though, I am gonna publicly coward out on Rekka, even if I respect her style. Love that grab animation, just absolute queen shit. I adore the fact that you get a magnet hook arm and can just zip around from enemy to enemy. Because my preferred strategy in these kinds of games is to get in and, when in doubt, get in even harder. I've seen people call this game and or Chai Guitar Nero and I 100% endorse it. Can't be a rockstar without being as aggressive as humanly possible. As you fight stylishly, you get both the DMC style ranking going from D to S and a Bayonetta point system if you want to number crunch the most efficient dance moves possible. Wow, who knew you could do both? Also, when you reach rank A, Chai's junk guitar turns into a real one. And on S, a crowd cheers Chai, Chai, Chai to the beat, which is, in professional terms, the sickest shit ever. Hey, you know what is a good way to keep up with the beat and avoid damage? dodging. You know what's even better? Parrying. You know what is even better still? Realizing that all the environmental hazards also move to the beat and you can parry them. Lasers? Blocked. Volcanoes? Blocked. Advertisement signs? Blocked, 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 none of you are free of sin. The gameplay is also varied up a bit with a timed parry minigame at several instances for later bosses and particularly tough regular enemies. And if you carry it out without fail, you get to nothing personal kit the enemy as they explode behind you. But it can get a bit stale, as the patterns are always the same and you can't skip that part as they go invulnerable before- Just kidding, fucking parry the shockwave! He's dead! Oh, come on, really?
Surprisingly, the exploration was very enjoyable as well. With DMC5, anything that was not combat was streamlined to hell and it kinda sucks, but here there are just a bunch of nooks and crannies with extra cash, collectibles and such. Several of them are also locked behind New Game Plus, so you get double the incentive to start a second playthrough right away. New music, new stuff. I also love the fact that the game is very open about item and special meter hoarding and goes Hey idiot, it goes away at the end of the fight, fucking use it! Just don't worry about it and drag out as hard as you can. Get into the mind of Chai. The man has two brain cells and one of them is constantly playing music. Do you really think he's worried about saving up his powers for the literal boss fight? So far, I was able to beat the game twice and finish all the post-game content, if with two healthy servings of cheese, so take this as the highest endorsement. Yanyumiu Tanzevat, and I still got a shitload of enjoyment out of this game, so I think you can too. I also want a sequel that is bigger, louder, and can indulge in mechanics like weapon switching or stages with a bit other than 4x4. And now, you will find it. Last minute SS ULA, fine print. Should have read it, punk. But more seriously, please accept this one scene as a final argument. First stage, first boss fight, after a dance to the death with a giant robot to the tune of 9 inch nails 1 million, we need to close off this stage in the most effective way possible, right? You got a killer track? But every song's gotta end. Man, I fucking love video games. Alright, that's the end of the video. A bit more loose than usual, but the March video is already written, recorded and in process of being edited by people more competent than me, so I hope you'll indulge me. And if you're new here, hey, check the rest of my garbage out. As always, warm thanks to my Patreon supporters, now visible on the screen, who keep funding my whims for some reason. Especially warm thanks for the new blood in the fold, Dalef Tihi, as well as the one-time coffee donation from Buster Core. See you in... whenever my underpaid workers are done. Probably a few weeks. <laughs>